Hi, I want to start off by thanking the conveners for giving us the opportunity to present our project here. I've been personally involved for seven years now and while this may seem long, it's only half the time that Carsten and Thomas have been working on this project, so they really deserve a lot of the credit for the work that has been presented in the following. And we're also happy to welcome new contributors to the team, Friedrich Dinsel and Nico Skibbe, PhD students in Berlin and Hannover, Maximilian Weigand, a postdoc from the University of Bonn, and Joost Hase, also from Bonn. So we are in the hydrogeophysics session here, and to give a bit of motivation, we argue that the current state of computational hydrogeophysics is not reproducible. So we want to get a process-based understanding of geophysical methods, so simulate dynamic processes, couple that to petrophysical models, make a process-based geophysical forward simulation, and potentially also incorporate that in an inverse framework. And this requires different simulators and also requires model coupling, and this can get complex quite quickly if we use commercial software packages and customized shell scripts in between. And the hypothesis is that this lack of reproducibility for ourselves, but also for other researchers, hinders the advancement in computational hydrogeophysics by itself. And, but luckily, there are um, a lot of powerful open source packages out there, and we want to present one of them. PyGimli is a general modeling and inversion library written in Python. It holds a lot of the computationally heavy stuff in C++, and these um, C++ parts are binded to the Python library, um, so you can full make use of the full functionality within a Python script. It holds funct functionality for structured, unstructured meshes in two and three dimensions, finite element and finite volume solvers, and these solvers are used to provide ready-made geophysical forward operators with ERT and travel time being the most sophisticated ones at the current development stage. And these forward operators can be combined in frameworks to allow for conventional, constrained, joint or time-lapse inversion. And all of these inversion approaches allow for region-specific and very flexible incorporation of regularization. There are also possibilities for hydrogeophysical modeling and inversion, and we have linked a complete example here with Darcy's law, the advection diffusion equation, uh, salinity to fluid conductivity, bulk resistivity by means of Archie's law, and then process-based electrical forward simulation. So feel free to check it out. Um, the code itself is, is open source, platform, com platform compatible, as Python itself, and we have also improved on the documentation. And today we want to focus on what has changed until the initial publication in 2017, which marked PyGimli 1.0. So what has PyGimli 1.1 to offer? The ERT manager from BERT has been moved to PyGimli, so it offers full functionality now with regard to topography, for example, Travel time calculations have been improved by using secondary nodes. There's initial support for anisotropic parameters, simulation of electrical streaming potentials in saturated media. Um, Maximilian Weigand has benchmarked the complex valued electrical forward operator um, with regard to the forward response, but also sensitivity calculations, so complex valued Jacobian, um, opening the way for complex valued electrical inversion. I will talk about geostatistical regularization and petrophysical joint inversion as well. There's a 3D viewer, which I will quickly demonstrate. And we have improved the installation procedure. So this is much more simple now. So don't try it out today. We're still building some binary packages, but if you try it tomorrow, I will promise that it will work on Windows, Mac and Linux. And the website has been improved, so a lot of new examples, um, and also a searchable database on peer-reviewed publications that use PyGimli. So if you jump to the website, you will uh, see this welcome screen where you can jump through recent publications. 
you can go to that particular publication or have a look at the complete database. You can sort this database by year, by journal, by author. And if you're interested, for example, who used Pygimli for monitoring purposes, you can use this search window in the upper left to look at recent publications on monitoring. Okay, so anisotropic parameters. In the equation level, we, we have this general form of a partial differential equation, also with different terms, which are left out here for the sake of simplicity. And this parameter A um, in the initial state could only be a floating point vector, and it can now also be complex, and it can also be anisotropic, and you can use a constitutive matrix for elasticity, for example. There's a quick example here in the lower left, and if you're interested in anisotropic parameters, um, check out the finite element tutorial. The equation level can also be used to couple different equations. So for electrical streaming potentials, we have a coupled Poisson equation where the divergence of water flow acts as an electrical current source. And um, we can use, we can make that in a basically a, uh, either fully coupled or in a two-step procedure, um, solve the hydraulic field first. So the hydraulic potential and the Darcy velocity shown here to the right. And again, we can use the show command with the mesh and the fields to visualize that. And we can use the velocity field calculated on the slide before with an electrokinetic coupling coefficient and the divergence operator to basically calculate this right-hand side of the Poisson equation and feed that as a source term into solving the electric potential field which is also shown here to the right. Um, so it really gives flexibility on the equation level, and but it also has these higher levels with where we have ready-made forward operators and inversion frameworks if you really just want to apply it to a given data set. Okay, um, IP, again, um, Maximilian Weigand has made this uh, nice little synthetic study. He compared the um, transfer impedances to the output of Ceatomo, the code by Andreas Kemner, which is widely used in the IP community, and the forward response and the complex sensitivity values are in good agreement. And we will now continue to work on the inversion part. There's a proof of concept um, inversion already as shown here, uh, available under the links here. Um, but this is yeah, ongoing research and not yet fully integrated in the new inversion frameworks. But it shows the potential and it would then also be applicable in three dimensions and could be used um, with the other frameworks such as uh, the time-lapse framework, for example. The Claudio Jordi, a PhD student at ETH Zurich, has tackled a long-standing problem that the regularization is always uh, mesh-dependent um, in its conventional um, formulation. And to overcome this mesh dependence, he introduced uh, geostatistical regularization operators in PyGimli, and they allow for a larger footprint. They allow also to incorporate prior information, such if you have, for example, dipping information on the on some geological layers from outcrops, you can incorporate that into the inversion. And it also offers the way to provide provide a means for structural coupling in, in joint inversions. And he Claudio also made a follow-up publication on this topic. Another way of joint inversion is petrophysically coupled joint inversion. So making use of the fact that different geophysical methods are sensitive to water saturation, to porosity, for example. Um, there's a simple example on the website where ERT and travel time data are used um, with the Archie and the time averaging equation to estimate water saturation. And also more complex example in a cryospheric context where electrical resistivity and seismic refraction data have been used to estimate a four-phase system 
of porosity, water content, ice content and air content. And again, the examples are linked here. And uh, if you're interested, feel free to contact me um, with regard to this recent publication. Okay, next step is the 3D viewer. Um, it works a lot like the 2D interface where we have this PG show function and you can provide a mesh. But now this mesh can also be of three dimensions. And this is leveraging up on uh, PyVista. And I will quickly show that. So if you run this PG show command, this uh, nice little intuitive GUI will open up and you can change the color bars and color limits and do some slicing here and also export a screenshot or a VTK file that you can use in conventional 3D visualization software such as Paraview, for example. Okay, and we're moving towards the end. PyGimli does not only offer a lot for research, it's also well suited for teaching. We use it a lot in conjunction with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and the different abstraction levels that we have introduced in the package, they also allow to work on an equation level in a master course, but on a more applied level in a bachelor course, for example. It is used at several universities in Germany and also internationally. And what is very nice if, is if you use it in conjunction with a Jupyter Hub, then students just need a login and a web browser and they don't need to have powerful laptops, they don't need um, to deal with installation issues and you can also centrally uh, distribute your lecture material. It has also been used here uh, last year to illustrate interactively the electrical imaging of tree trunks and um, the visitors of this stand at Highlights der Physik in Bonn could uh, vary different um, acquisition properties of this electrical imaging uh, setup. And um, yeah, I wanted to show it to you at, at EGU, but uh, now you will be left with this video here to give you an impression of that. Okay, this was the very quick overview. Um, again, PyGimli is open source. So feel free to contribute. Um, there are different ways to contribute. You don't have to be a Python developer right from the start. You can just let us know of interesting publications that you made or have seen using PyGimli so we can add it to the database. If you experience an issue, feel free to open an issue on GitHub and we will respond as quickly as we can. Um, and we prefer this via email. So it, that it's searchable and also can help others. And um, if you're also willing to contribute to the code, we made an explanation on, on the steps necessary to do so. Um, and this is also linked here. And um, yeah, with that, I again want to thank you for your attention. Thanks to the conveners for the invitation. And I very much hope to see you in Vienna in 2021. Bye.